you two. Fingers crossed this is going to work. Right. There's always like a five, seven second delay between StreamYard and YouTube. So, oh, we're mm -hmm. on YouTube. All right. Hello. <laughs> we are officially live. Excellent. <laughs> So I always give it a couple of minutes for people who, I think YouTube sends out notifications or sometimes there's alerts when things go live. So I always give people a couple extra minutes, but um, I might as well do the intro because <laughs> this is right. the archive. So yeah. if does miss the live stream, they can watch this fabulous interview with you lovely women later. So for, <laughs> for those people, I am so, I feel so honored and so privileged. I am so excited to talk to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I am here with, the fabulous Tracy Gardner, who is the Yay. author of Hallmark's first ever cozy mystery. We are talking about <laughs> You have your physical copy and I have my ebook version. Yep, here's the real copy of Out of the Picture, um, the first in a series of Shepherd Sisters Mystery by Tracy. And we are so proud of it. Um, it is a super charming story and it's just really exciting for us to be moving into mystery. And Tracy was so wonderful to work with. So thank and, you. Thank you. You made the process easy. Good, good. <laughs> Obviously we are joined by her fabulous editor at, from Hallmark Publishing. I mean, this is just incredible. <laughs> I feel so honored. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here. Um, Hey, Vicki. Oh my gosh, Fran. Oh, everyone's popping up in the comments. This is so exciting. <laughs> I know. See, now I'm jealous. I'm like, her her copy, I feel like, is winning over my ebook. My physical yeah. copy is coming on Saturday. So I will have the physical copy, though. <laughs> yeah, I looked at ours a few days ago, but of course, we got it from the printer. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the benefits of the printer. So cute. I mean, obviously, like we're talking about your book out of the picture. So what would be your little elevator pitch for people? If you were to describe your book in 30 seconds, what would you say? <laughs> um, out of the picture is Savannah Shepard has come home to her small Lake Michigan town um, from the big city after a broken engagement and uh, kind of has to start her life over. And in the process, she reconnects with her adopted grandmother, who is the town matriarch, and gets pulled into um, a mystery where she has to basically save Caroline Carson's life um, and solve the mystery of who's trying to hurt her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> With a little help from her sisters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is like a perfect creation. I can tell you've done that book blurb a number of times. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. So. Well, is there something not on the book blurb or not, that's that you want readers to know or to look for in the book? Is there something different that you're like, oh, this isn't on the book blurb, but this is something cool? Um, <clears throat> well, I think you touched on it a little bit with Savannah definitely relies on her sisters for help. There is kind of a, a team that she, you know, throughout the book um, where she gets a little bit of help from the local detective who ends up reluctantly getting involved once he finally starts to believe Savannah that something's going on. Um, and then, of course, the town doctor who she meets as well um, ends up being a great help to her too. He's also a very fun love interest. Yeah. <laughs> the widow doctor who plays the piano with the adorable daughter. I mean, he's a book boyfriend now. He's making my life. <laughs> yeah, he's a good book boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> What is something else for Stacey? Is there something in the book that you were like, oh, this isn't on the back layer, but people should know this for the, like, they need to pick this up for this reason. You know, um, one thing we loved about this book when we first saw it was uh, just the idea of so Savannah Shepard, the heroine who will be, and we already have a book team lined up, very excited. Um, but Savannah Shepard as an uh, amateur sleuth is it's very original because her former job was an art authenticator. So she's someone who could tell a forgery from a real thing. And uh, this makes her uh, really, um, she notices details that other people miss, which is such a great thing. And, and, and someone who likes to solve mysteries. So we thought this was really original. We thought it was really clever. Um, and I think that readers are really going to enjoy that too. Yeah. I mean, one of my later questions, which I'm going to jump down to right now, because this is the you can dovetail off of this perfectly, is the fact that art is such a big 
factor in this book. I love the fact that every chapter, at least in my ebook copy, they had the paints and then there would be brushes to break up the paragraphs from scene to scene. And then art is such a part of her character. I kind of was, I thought she was synonymous with art to some degree because she's teaching art in elementary school. She used to appraise for the gallery. <laughs> I mean, can you just talk about the role of art in this book? Because that seems to be so prominent to me. Art played a huge role in Savannah's life from the time she was a kid. Um, and thank you, Stacey, for kind of summarizing why Savannah is uniquely qualified yeah. to take care of this mystery. Um, I think sometimes I know I know her. I know Savannah too well, and I just assume everybody else knows her too. Um, <laughs> But she, Savannah and her sisters, Skylar and Sydney, grew up um, hanging out at Caroline Carson's house. She was kind of the adopted grandmother. Caroline and her husband are avid fine art collectors. So Savannah grew up around beautiful works of art. Um, it was just, it was kind of the, the landscape of her childhood. And it helped nurture her love of art and eventually led to why she went away to Chicago and became an art authenticator. Um, yeah. So there's always, she has the artist side where she loves to create, but she, so it, coming back to Carson allows her to kind of get back into that side of it too. Yeah, yeah. You know, you were talking about the, the landscape of her childhood and I wanted to say something else we really liked about this book was the, the setting. It's on the, in this beautiful, uh, that Caroline's mansion is this beautiful setting on the banks of Lake Michigan and there's, small town is so idyllic you know and so we really appreciated that too and and um as we're kind of going into fall it's like such an early fall it's so nice <laughs> i can even ask them like this is actually <laughs> 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 had something like can you talk about the small town like setting because that is so hallmark to me. And then you you totally stole. I thought this book right. was <laughs> <laughs> the fall. I really like about this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wavelength is y'all. I mean, I think this book with your publication timing is perfect because the opening chapter is her enjoying the fall crisp air. I just thought yeah. that was yeah. And yeah. Then Start of the school year in the book, and she's coming back to be the teacher. I mean, you guys just you nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing I like about art in the story, so being, um, painting a mural, and that this mural is like the details are getting filled in, and it's progressing over the course of the story. Even as details of the history are getting filled in over the course of the story, so. It's just really kind of fun device. I thought that was really a nice detail. That was something about this book that I think I really appreciated was all the details of how she was trying to recapture her love of painting and art in that way. Whereas before she would just kind of bear witness to art instead of being the kind of art. So the way you kind of ingrained that of, oh, she had the breakup and now she's reclaiming her identity in this sense. I just really liked that element. Yeah. That's, I love that you got that from that. That's really what she did. Yeah. Right. Classes that came in handy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, there are a lot of details in this book that I, I love. And so I was going to ask you, if, like, what your favorites were, because mine is the fact she appreciates show tunes. I mean, we had the Hamilton, <laughs> album, we had Mamma Mia, and we had Dear Up Hanson, all referenced. I was so excited when Hamilton was. <laughs> so I was curious. I mean, you have these little details, like, they're just so entertaining to me you must have had a favorite that you kind of snuck in there. Favorite musical? Favorite? Well, I, these I, pop I, I, um, I think most of the time when I, like when I'm writing main characters and then the, the bigger peripheral characters, they all have a little bit of me and I love musicals. Um, and I can thank my daughter for that. She was a drama student in high school and I just got pulled right after her. <laughs> Oh, no. um, so, it, so it helped shape she, Savannah's character to me as I was thinking about what what her interests would be. Um, she was an art student, and she was she. I imagine that she was probably a, a you know a drama student in high school, um, and I. So she has that love of musicals just like me. I have, I have I do I don't think I have a favorite. There's too many, <laughs> and I have not seen enough. I need to see more. 
<laughs> Did you have a favorite pop culture reference in the book, Stacey? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I probably <laughs> <Nelson also. laughs> I mean, and then, and then beyond the pop culture, um, the finer details, I really enjoyed too. Um, when you read a mystery that, that I do with art, it kind of makes like me feel more like reading it kind of like me feel more knowledgeable and sophisticated, even though I'm not very sophisticated. Um, but it was, it was so to understand, uh, you know, uh, the details about the fine art, but it also, um, I learned a little bit too, so I like that, yeah. That was interesting. That had Monet reference, but it wasn't the Monet painting. That was the one that had the forgery elements. So I was like, "Oh, I'm learning about art now." <laughs> yeah. But I was like, yeah. I'm trying to be spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a number of paintings. I mean, there are not. A, she had quite a few paintings aside from Monet, so that's not a spoiler. I'm, yeah, that's okay. I'm not going to tell more about the mystery. I promise. <laughs> Uh, that was more to myself because I already twice during this like conversation I almost went wait a minute. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I mean the book just had so many fun details. Fonzie was the dog's name. You had a Columbo reference, a Nancy Drew reference. I solemnly swear I'm up to no good hair reference. I mean there was just a lot of fun ones in there that made me smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus I you love, had the I, like, I had a lot of fun ones. <laughs> Well, I mean, plus we're all dog moms. We all have dogs. And so I love that you have the dogs in the books. We have Duke and Princess. And this happens very, very early. But they are the meat cute. So favorite dog in the story, favorite animals? I'm curious. <laughs> the dog elements, how this kind of came into play. Um, um, Savannah's dog, Fonzie, is named after a dog that, that we had um, a few years ago who's unfortunately not with us anymore. But he was the, he was the foster terrier. terrier. And we always thought with his coloring and his little red collar, he just reminded us of Ozzy. So, um, but I loved getting to write with fancy tails because there are always dogs coming in and out. Savannah or Sydney runs a um, she runs a really great business, and she's always been full time. I mean, I kind of love that you have the sisters. So you have Sydney, Savannah, and Skylar. And I just thought that you had like all the S's with their last name being Shepherd as well. So I mean, you have, I love this. I was, I had the note somewhere, but you had the athletic one. You have Sydney who's, who does the yoga. You have <laughs> Savannah who's creative. And then you have Skylar who's the lawyer with the husband and the son. So I'm kind of curious about the family dynamics. If you guys want to elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, why don't you talk? <laughs> um, I knew when I came up with Savannah Shepard, I knew that she was a middle sister. And I don't know how, I just, she's a middle sister. And <clears throat> I'm close with my sister. We have a pretty small family. I just have one sister. But we are very close, but we're very different. Um, and so it just made sense to me that Savannah and each of her sisters, they would have a, a really tight knit relationship, but they each bring something completely different to the table. Uh, and Savannah coming back to Carson after being gone for 10 or 12 years, she is, is kind of the glue of the trio of the um, because Sydney and Skylar don't really have a whole lot in common. Savannah's kind of the middle ground. So it's just a really nice kind of reunion for the three of them. Yeah. 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 I mean, part of what I thought was so interesting and why I really why it caught my attention was the fact that they're so different from each other because all of your characters they all have different backgrounds and they all have these they're multi-dimensional and that was something that was just so impressive because you were able to get a lot of care and a lot of backstory in this book <laughs> you have <laughs> over, <laughs> like you have getting over heartbreak you have potential new love interest you have the sisters with all their different relationships <laughs> there's a lot going on in this book <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun to write. It was a lot of fun to to figure out, you know, what what would be going on with with each sister. Um, but yeah, Skylar Skylar has been married for I don't five or six years. She's the more serious of the three, and Sydney is a little younger and um, just having fun, you know, um, 
So she's not serious right now, and she's fine with that. Uh, and now Savannah kind of has to find her footing after she was engaged a handful of years, and now she's kind of back, yeah, back home and starting over. My dog growled. He's like, I agree with that answer. <laughs> Does he want to say hello? Look <laughs> up at me. I think he's starting a treat, so maybe later. I might grab him. He's not on the attack mode. See all the dogs? <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of characters in this book. So, I mean, did one of them especially grab your heart? Did you guys have a favorite character from the book that you wanted to talk about a little bit? I, I love the sister's dad, Harlan. Um, I know without even meaning to, I, a lot of my dad is in that character. Um, um, he's just a really solid guy. He's, they can yeah. depend on him. He will basically do whatever is needed to take care of his girls. And um, he was, I, I really loved Harlan. I thought he was great. great. What about what you, Stacey? No, you, you, with the family dynamics, you really see that warmth coming through, which I think is so wonderful. You know, um, the sisters are kind of coming, coming together. together. And, and um, the, you really feel that relationship with them and their father and them with the parents. So, and the parents seem to genuinely like each other. You know what I mean? You have a really nice relationship, too. Um, so, and, and like one that I think Savannah aspires to a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, I loved the character of Caroline. Uh, so she was like the sort of on, the honorary grandmother. And she, um, even, even though she's, and, and older, she's, she's older, older than her. She's, I can't remember exactly how old she is. Uh, she's 89. What is? Caroline, 80, she's 89. Yeah. yeah, so she's very really independent. She's very um, uh, kind of stubborn in some ways, I, and I just I uh, really thought she was a lot. So yeah, that was you know, it's, I love how she's the unofficial grandmother, and they they have their family, but they also extended it a little bit. It was I thought it was really cute because sometimes you have people who have hybrid family because they lack the blood relation, or they lack having that other one. But I thought it was so interesting that you had both of those you have the extended family but they thought she was the grandmother because <laughs> of the dynamics yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i think in my mind the the three shepherd sisters when they were really young just assumed that she was their grandmother they just grew up thinking that so, <laughs> the families are so we have a question vicky who i love everyone should be reading vicky um tracy you have a real connection to your setting right yeah, I yeah, I have a connection to my setting. Um, the town that that I live in now. I'm originally from like the Metro Detroit area, but I live in a pretty small town now. Um, so I basically, for the story, transplanted my town to the shores of Lake Michigan. I I love Lake Michigan. It's beautiful. It looks like it looks like the ocean without salt. <laughs> um, but when I was writing the scenes, like in the middle of the downtown area, and you know, if they're meeting for lunch or someone's walking their dog, I also kind of pictured the um, the little central downtown area from Gilmore Girls. That's kind of what was in my head when I was. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh! I think you just—we were meant to connect. Stars Hollow. I would love to Bill. Made me so happy. I mean. Because when you think of Hallmark, you think of community. There is a sense of community. And you really, you nailed that in this book. <laughs> so I was wondering if you about that a little bit. Thank because you. you have a small town vibe, but you also do have the, I mean, they do go into the city at one point, but you're able to really capture the Coase Ministry feel with the community. So I was wondering if you wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> that was, I think that's just what I, like thinking back to previous stories that I've written, that just tend, it tends to be the, what I read. Um, where I grew up, it was kind of a big city, and you didn't. There was no real central downtown area. There was no nowhere where you can really like park and walk and do your errands and meet people. And then when we moved to where we're at now. I don't know, 15 years ago or so. Um, I just love that. I can't imagine living anywhere else. 
I think it's, it's, it's in the back of my mind whenever I'm writing. What do you think? A Hallmark? I mean, Hallmark is known for their community settings. You know, uh, between a lot of small towns, and this one is such a, the house and the Lake Michigan and the, and the town is such a great place for a reason to take to. And, and I think it's really, I think that's one of the nice things about reading is you have something in your life that's stressing you out or um, that kind of thing. You just want to get away from things a little bit. You do get away from things that are nice and it's very uh, comforting, it's very healing, and it's fun. It's like a it's like a little like you know vacation to a bed and breakfast island, except you know much cheaper. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, and it's, it's just a little escape for the reader, which is so good for the heart and for the brain. I think. Um, so uh, it, um, that, that we always we always look for ways to give that reader in one way or another. It doesn't mean that we won't do like a big city if it's a kind of fun big city. Uh, in one way or another, though, we try to give readers. Um, um, that is, yeah, yeah. Get, get, get away from everything. A place that you want to be, which is of course, uh, um, which of course this one did, like in um, over the. Over the yeah, yeah. It's, been, it's such a nice, nice thing to go to in your imagination. I have to admit, this book made me smile and I was laughing. So, I mean, I don't know as the interviewer to reveal my favorite characters, but I love the kids. Molly and Nolan were my favorite people in this entire book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love Molly. She made a little clay and she gave it to Savannah and she needs to have it on her desk so that she can be there with her to protect her at night. Like the details are so cute. So cute. <laughs> yes, it's adorable. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, you're, the you have these one liners and these kind of one out like these scenes that were just so entertaining. Nolan wanting his cookies and wanting his second dessert. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just a, that's a side effect of having kids, having my own kids and, you know, growing up around that kind of, they were so easy to write, Nolan and Molly. They were so much fun to write and they just, they they did their own thing. I, that, I didn't really even, they wrote their own scenes. So. I mean, Mrs. Fluffy Pants was, was just, I thought that was the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> But like that was the escape element of you really did make me laugh and smile while reading. I mean, Good. it's hard to be upset when you read Mrs. Fluffy Pants. <laughs> that is not a spoiler. I promise. That is not integral to knowing mystery. It is just. A <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun with this, the sisters' interactions too, because you can you can kind of see there's a pecking order sometimes, and they nitpick at each other. But it's all pretty mutual, and so that was, and those know things too. I felt like that was just pretty effortless. It just, it was. Um, they wrote their own scenes too. <laughs> nice. I could tell it was. One of, I I read the book. Where I got to know you a little bit, and then you mentioned your daughter. But but even beforehand, I knew you had kids because you're able to capture the kid qualities. <laughs> if that makes sense, yeah. they were just so cute. I mean, this is Hallmark, so you have to ask, if they were to adapt it, who would your dream casting be for these characters? Um, the whole time I was writing Savannah, I I, so I think it's hard to hard. imagine anybody else. I just yeah. imagine Autumn Reeser. I don't know why I love, I mean, I love all of the Hallmark actors and actresses, but something, something about Savannah that I was writing her, that's who I, that's who I see. Um, so the other, there's, I have different ideas, you know, depending on um, which character. Um, Aiden is another one that I think, I was thinking about it today, like which actor I could picture, but it's hard as I'm writing. Aiden is the doctor that is. He's, I'm sorry, yeah, Dr. Gallagher, Dr. Aiden Gallagher. Um, I think if you, when you're starting out writing and then you get, pretty much all the way through the story and you're picturing a certain actor, it's hard to get somebody else into your head into that role. Um, so for me, Dr. Aiden Gallagher um, is Neil Bledsoe. Um, he was in Coming Home for Christmas. Oh, yeah. With Tim McKellar. Um, but I was thinking like, okay, who else? What I, what I like hearing 
I've talked to a couple of my friends who um, I have one who's a huge Hallmark fan. So she could say even better than I could, like who she pictured. But I love hearing what other people think as far as, oh, no, I pictured so-and-so as Sydney and this is her as the dad. So I don't know if you, either of you pictured anybody specific. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm really, I don't have any great casting in my head, uh, but I can certainly uh, invite people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. If you guys have any recommendations in the comments section, if you guys love from Hallmark, please type away. I mean, I just kept thinking of Cameron Mathis effort as Aiden for some reason. I just got him like. Oh, oh. Doctor Jacket, <laughs> a little surgeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did you have anyone in mind for the sisters or, I mean, Caroline, you have some strong female characters you got to do castings for. <laughs> Caroline was tough. I thought about her. Um, Sydney and Skylar, yeah, I definitely, I was picturing most of the time when I was writing Skylar, the older, the attorney sister, the older sister, I was um, imagining Jessie Schramm. She was in Road to Christmas, um, uh, trying to, Real New Year's Eve. Um, just very, Skylar's blonde and she's just always put together. It doesn't matter if she's, you know, on her way to court or she's in the park with her son. She just always looks like she could be in a fashion magazine. <laughs> she, um, and then Sydney, I think I, I mostly imagine Megan Park. Um, but if Megan Park had red hair instead of blonde. So Sydney's just very, she's a free spirit and, um, She's adorable and she and just she has tons of energy, so I could see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who would you cast? Do you have anyone else in mind, Stacey? No, I really, no I really don't <laughs> have anyone to cast that, but I love that. Uh, uh, here, here, uh, I do. I mean, I'm not going to lie. For some reason, when she said the 89 years old, I was like, oh, could Betty White be Caroline? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 she could. <laughs> I'm curious. She, she, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like we need to start a petition for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, book two, that this is this is happening for sure. So Caroline and the girls are coming back. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I mean, do you have anything in mind for book two or any I'm really excited. Um, um I know the plot, I know everything that happens. Uh, and I've just, just started writing it. So I'm super excited just to, to kind of get into that. And I, know, I know people who have read book one are curious to find out more about the other two sisters also. You know, so it's really fun to have the secondary characters that you can play with, and really have, you know, you know things, uh, uh, things going on. Like, I know you're working on Tracy, uh, but um, I think that it's, it's really fun to have those uh this family dynamic those, those three teachers 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 teachers. Teachers. we have like the same cover design because we also need to talk about this book cover it is stunning i want to live in this house oh, i'm so glad <laughs> uh, i'm so glad uh, so, uh, it'll have um so it's not finished yet you know but we're working on it it'll have a similar vibe you know because you want to you want them to live with like they belong together. So we have a real similar vibe. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of love, I don't know how well this is going to pop up because I had one away. But I mean, you have the frame. I just, I got the biggest kick out of the frame. And then you have this Victorian mansion. I mean, the book cover is just stunning. <laughs> <laughs> I was really happy with how it came out. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's Stacy had emailed me to ask um, about ideas, like, is this what you think Caroline's house looks like? We really didn't talk about a lot about it, but what you came up with for the cover, it's like you just saw right into my head. <laughs> that's Caroline's house. I mean, that's what I would have chosen. That's perfect. Yeah, I mean, you didn't try it right And, um, you know, so it kind of, I don't know, it seems like it, it, it worked to work so. But it was important for us to get the uh, the first cover cover right. We worked hard on it because it was very exciting. this is our first foray into mystery. So so far we've done uh, wholesome romance, um, but and we're doing a, a few more mysteries next year. But it's our first one, so it was very exciting for us and very important to us. 
Uh, I know. This is, I mean, this is your first cozy mystery. I mean, this connection. Yeah. What was this process? You guys wanted to talk about that for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can remember. <laughs> uh, Tracy, Tracy, maybe you need to talk about that. Uh, um, and I'll chime in. Um, I honestly, at the beginning of all this, I had, I really had no idea where this was going to go. Um, my agent, Fran, with Literary Council, came to me with the idea of, you know, hey, um, how do you feel about sending a page to Hallmark Publishing? Let's come up with something. Um, and I just, I, I, I felt like both. That's a crazy idea. There's no way I could come up with something for Hallmark. That's insane. <laughs> and okay, why not? I don't have anything to lose. Um, so Fran helped me uh, kind of fine tune like what the what the concept would be, what the pitch would be. And then I think when I first sent it and I got feedback from Stacy, I think you were you liked the idea, you were interested, but there. I, I mean, it's, it's always, always a process to kind of fine tune things and make sure that it fits um, with the Hallmark vision and that it's gonna work on all levels. So it was a it was a learning process for me, but it was just fantastic. I had no idea what I was stepping into. <laughs> <laughs> with books like Tracy's where we make a deal on proposal only, uh, uh, I, I, I get I, um, the approval of the heads of programming. Um, since it's just a proposal, since it's only a proposal and not a manuscript, there's an opportunity to mess around with it a little and make it really lined up with what Hallmark does. And so that's what they do. So I go, I take the proposal into the meeting and we all talk about it. It's um, totally Usually go back and give the writer notes and, and we'll shape it up a little bit. Uh, those, those writers, those uh, people, people on the other side, side are really good at uh, not just identifying what, what makes it Hallmark, but they're also really sharp on plot. You know, if there's something that they're not, they don't know how to understand, be like, what is this? What's going on here? Um, and I think it can be, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tracy, I think it can be a bit of a grueling process uh, for an author to keep that book a couple of times. You know, and, and I mean, I'm sure when you get notes back, it's, I'm sure it's a very Hollywood thing where it's like, we love it, change everything. You know? <laughs> I never felt like that. I mean, at, at every step of the way, I never, I really never felt like I was sacrificing anything that I had come up with. That's so good to hear. No, yeah. I, I really didn't. And the few things um, where maybe you or um, I had this great editor, Rhonda Murworth too, where I was getting a few ideas back and forth from you, like, wouldn't it be good if maybe we added something like this? I I really felt like every suggestion that I got just contributed to the story. I didn't have a problem with any of it. I I found the revision, I'm probably strange, but I found the revision process fun. Oh, I'm so glad to hear. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it just, because I could see how it was shaping the story and making everything stronger and it allowed me to, I am a perfectionist, so it allowed me to go back and, and <laughs> whatever else I, you know, anything that I caught that I didn't catch the first time around, it let me fine tune things too. So I did, I enjoyed it. That is fantastic. Rhonda um, is so talented. So the editor that we work with, she's won two Rita's. She's um, amazing. Editing. She's, and she's been nominated for more. She's absolutely fantastic. And so um, uh, I'm glad that you have with her. And I'm not surprised because I just think everyone really enjoys working with her. Yes. Um, yeah. But uh, and here in the comments, saying hi, and then Vicky, how Fran is amazing. She's the best. Yeah, <laughs> Fran is a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just sound like you have this positive experience with it. I mean, on it, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, something about this proposal must have just truly caught your eye because it is such an honor to be the first cozy mystery for Hallmark. Yeah. So, like, what was it that just pulled right in? Yeah, um, you know, uh, the story with the, well, I, I don't want to say too much, um, but the artistic themes of the story and the setting of the story, setting of the story, there were some people who uh, made it 
kind of put it over the top and made it that much nicer. Um, so even, you know, even with the mystery, we want <laughs> murder. Um, we still want to have that really cozy feel. Like, so the cozy mystery is the genre. We're as cozy as it gets when it comes to cozy mystery. And so we're looking for those elements that um, are going to make people feel good. Yeah. Uh, so that proposal really had that. Yeah. So um, I, like, I like that. Yeah. I, I was lucky on my end, too, before, um, because really before anything ever made it to you, Stacey, I had Fran in my corner yeah. to help me fine tune everything before I ever even sent it to you. Yeah. And, and yeah. again, during the, the revision process and everything, I always felt like, you know, I had Fran on my shoulder. <laughs> That's great. That's just just that, that extra little piece too. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very yeah. fortunate. Yeah. Oh, is coming up with an original book that ties into the story. So we work with a, a recipe company that develops an original book. And so it's Holy Young Baked Chicken, which I think is the cutest name for <laughs> That was one of my yeah. questions. I was like, did you write this? <laughs> No, no, Google wrote it. <laughs> we, we had, uh, so, I mean, uh, yeah, so they developed that recipe, and it's, it's uh, um, which is going to be on the Home and Family Show on the, what is, Wait, it, is it, the 13th? I, I think so. Yeah, I think, I can't remember, I remember but I think it's, it airs on the 13th on Home and Family Show. They're taking the recipe from the book and talking about the book. So would be very cool. That is so amazing. Oh my gosh. Now I need to like set the set the reminder on the table. <laughs> yeah. Vicky, she has a question. Victoria Gilbert, aka Vicky Weevil. Uh, how long did the entire process take? Um from finish to finish product or writing? Um probably from pitch to when I turned in the full manuscript, I would say about nine months, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, in about five months to write it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, that's a quick. That's a relatively quick turnaround time. I mean, <laughs> less than a year. I mean, that is a rhyme type of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, confirming that it is yes the thirteenth. So I just had a TV reminder on their schedule to go watch this and see this on Home and Family. With Cameron, yeah, yeah. by the way, who I picture as Aiden, so perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Now you will learn more because he's going to be talking about it. Yeah. I mean, he's so cute on that show. I mean, so I'm kind of curious because we're talking about cozies. What cozies from Hallmark with their movie adaptations? They've had all these other books adapted. What is your favorite cozy mystery from Hallmark with the what has captured your heart? Mystery woman or a tea garden in a oh swimsuit? Oh my gosh. Uh, I like, it's going to be hard. hard. I really like writing on Daryl and Daryl. Um, I love Morning Show Mystery. Um, those are probably my favorite. I love a tea garden too. Um, so uh, it is, and those are very different from the books, I think. Um, uh, they're, they're they're the thing. thing, I just love what they think. Um, um, I love the books too, uh, but they're, you know, they're different and I really like them. Uh, but yeah, morning short, morning short series I really enjoy. Uh, and I just think the writing is really sharp on Darrow and Darrow. I really like that too, so yeah. I love Darrow and Darrow. Mm -hmm. Do you guys both have the same favorite then? <laughs> I, yeah, I think Darren and Darren is probably, that's my, that, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, the writing, I, the, I just, it's the storyline. I love it. Um, and I think, I, I think my favorite Hallmark movie is Autumn in the Vineyard. I love oh, Rachel yeah. Lee Cook. I just, I just and the setting I is just so gorgeous. Um, I, I would watch her in anything. <laughs> She's yeah. great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite, Stacey? Your favorite non-Hallmark movie? 
Favorite non Hallmark or know, favorite like non cozy mystery Hallmark oh, mystery movie? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Here. okay. So <laughs> I love um, um, Journey Back to Christmas. We actually did a companion. Our first release was a companion novel to Journey Back to Christmas. Loved that, um, but because um, I like time travel, um, I really like. Oh, I oh, can't remember the name of it. And so it's Mark Marcus, and it's a military romance, and they're doing another one with him for 2019. Um, and I can't remember the name of it, like, oh, or something like that. Um, Mark Lucas, who used to be Buffy's boyfriend on, uh, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, which I'm biased because I got to meet him. Uh, uh, he was so He was so nice. Charming. Uh, but uh, I really like those as well. Um, uh, it's really, uh, it's really Rocky Mountain Christmas. Uh, Rocky Mountain Christmas. I really like that one. Um, and, you know, and I watch, I watch a lot of them. <laughs> My TV habits are so funny because I watch a lot of TV and then a little bit of like Supernatural and Mindhunter. So it's just like <laughs> I saw that. I love Supernatural too. I thought I remembered that about you. Yeah, I see so many movies. I see so many of them, and it's really hard to. It's really hard to. Uh, it's hard to pick a favorite, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, I'm very excited to go down to the lineup. We have forty movies for Christmas, which is absolutely amazing. So yeah. Uh, my job during the Christmas season, yeah. <laughs> like unofficially my job. I mean, <laughs> representing Hallmark, you can kind of have a reason. I just, it's just Hallmark. <laughs> that's, that's the one. That's, that's the one. If you're writing for Hallmark, if you're just sitting around watching Hallmark movies, it's work. It's research. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. But yeah. Like, when you have other Hallmark books, you're like, hmm, like, oh, I'm interested. I. I interested in writing there's always a reason to buy another hallmark book it's just yeah yep. Yep. <laughs> i mean <laughs> you're winning over my heart with the references that we have gilmore girls from tracy so you're saying buffy i mean <laughs> so yeah I, one of my favorite things with news is doing either or this or that random questions and my category tonight is so comfy and cozy and so I wanted to ask if you guys wanted to answer the same question or alternate. Like it is totally how you wanted to do this. Um, let's answer the same question, Tracy. <laughs> okay. So a snuggly hoodie or a fuzzy scarf? I'm going to say fuzzy. I'm going to say fuzzy scarf because I've had some that my mom made me and one that my BFF made me. Oh, <laughs> nice. I would say hoodie. I'd have to say hoodie. I have a lot. <laughs> the com uh, cushy flats or comfy sneakers? I sneakers. Wait, yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's no order to this either, by the way. These are all randomized, comfy, question related things. Oh, I'll say sneakers. Though. Sneakers pumpkin and sneakers, both of you. Pumpkin pie or apple pie? Pumpkin. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yoga pants or pajamas? Pajamas. Yoga pants. Yoga pants. Yoga. Pajamas are too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Craft night or game night? Craft night. Game night. Game night. I, just, I can't. I am. I have no artistic talent at all. Not even a little. <laughs> Movie night or reading night? Reading. Reading. <laughs> <laughs> <Why not both? laughs> and the thing is, I feel like you two were meant to be together because Tracy, like, like it kind of rhymes with Stacy and Tracy. Like you guys are meant to be paired together. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have different answers. <laughs> Creamy baked pasta or homemade pizza. Oh, they both sound really good. I'm really hungry. <laughs> you said homemade pizza? You have baked pasta or homemade pizza. Homemade pizza. Homemade. <laughs> so this is, again, random, comfy, cozy. Your porch or the local park? 
Local park so I can bring the dogs. <laughs> oh, that's a good name. I was going to say porch, but you're right. <laughs> Probably still porch. <laughs> The clean laundry scent or bright citrus scent. Oh, citrus. So, clean laundry. <laughs> I'm just one answer to one of you. Uh, velvet or silk? I'm going to say velvet. Velvet. It's 100 degrees here, but I'm ready for fall. <laughs> a carved pumpkin or a pumpkin? Or a what? what? Or a painted pumpkin. Oh, oh painted. painted. Carved. <laughs> a knitted scarf or a flannel scarf? A knitted yep. again, because of what I said. <laughs> knitted. Chai flavor or pumpkin spice? Pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. <laughs> the crisp cold cider comes from hot cider. I'm gonna say okay. hot. I'm gonna say hot. Like I say, it's like a hundred degrees here in Studio City, but I'm so ready for fall. <laughs> I would say cold. I mean, you guys, I mean, this book is perfect with the I mean, this is an autumn call like fall cozy mystery. It's perfect. Again, yeah. that's why the questions are all fall related. I don't mean <laughs> to make you <laughs> it's not too um green tea or chamomile tea. Probably green tea. I'm a caffeine addict. <laughs> Cinnamon or nutmeg? Cinnamon. 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 Hey, you guys agree. <laughs> um, gen again, so this is this was inspired by the book in a way. Like doing yoga or knitting. And you can tell why yoga is included because one sister. I'm, I'm bad at both. Uh, yeah. so I guess I'll say yoga. <laughs> I can support it. I know. I would say they both sound like a bad idea for me. <laughs> I was I'll do yoga once in a while. I do. My dogs like lay on top of me. They look nice. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever go down to Florida to do anything, the dog is like, "Oh, she's down here to play with me." I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going for a ride to see the foliage or playing in the leaves themselves? Oh, I guess I'm going for a ride so I don't get itchy. <laughs> yeah, I would say going for a ride. <laughs> Banana, walnut bread, or carrot loaf? Carrot loaf. Carrot, carrot. carrot. <laughs> A comfy chair or a soft, snuggly blanket? Oh. Oh? <laughs> yeah, both. <bro. laughs> I don't want to blanket on the floor. <laughs> you can like get the perfect cozy blanket in bed or something. Um, binge watch, uh, something to binge watch, soothing music in the background. Uh, soothing music in the background. Yeah, music. Yeah. But I'm only thinking because I, I, I edit at home a lot. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I actually have a whole playlist that is just for homework writing and editing. You know, it's all like music. Yeah. That is so cool. You should share that. I'm curious now what's on it. Do they have, does it, is it actually singing or is it classical? I need more information about this playlist. It has, it has some of both. Yeah. I know some people can't listen to music while they write or edit, but it doesn't bother me. So, yeah. So both. I know your other interview, which everyone should go check out. Um, you mentioned you listen to music as well, and your tunes <laughs> listener, like you guys in music. I kind of was assuming this. I have to have music to write. I it just doesn't work as well if it's completely silent. So I have a different playlist depending on what I'm writing. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So <laughs> Savannah Hendricks agreed. She's like, yes, Stacey, please share the list. Uh, <laughs> you need to create like a Spotify list or something because you're gonna have people coming <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Super soft blanket or a fuzzy robe? Or a fuzzy fluffy <laughs> robe. <laughs> Super soft blanket. This is making me feel very cozy to be <laughs> <laughs> Fuzzy socks or clap hello. Fuzzy socks. I have Fuzzy socks. six pairs. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. You have me beat. 
<laughs> okay, this is you mentioned caffeine. Tea or coffee? Coffee. coffee. Yeah, I I drink both though. I drink tea in the afternoon, and actually, meetings I bring a little tea and teacup, a teacup and saucer sometimes, and everyone makes this big deal out of it. They're like, "Woo, you're so fancy!" <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Oh my gosh, that is a sorry my dog. I, sorry, I brought this closer to me. I was almost out of juice, so I have to plug it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, my dog is like, what are you talking to who is not me? So, final <laughs> question, tea or cocoa? Cocoa. Tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious okay, if anyone in the comments has any either or questions or any questions about the book or Hallmark, the publishing this first Cozy Mystery, because that is so impressive. I feel so honored that I get to talk about this with y'all. I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, is there anything else about the books? I mean, those were all my questions, but is there anything else about the book that you wanted to talk about or touch on or? Um, what do you think, Tracy? I uh, can't think of anything. I, um, I guess I have a writer question from you because my background, you know, is writing a little bit romance, uh, but not mystery, not mystery um, for, for plotting this out, did you have to make a grid or that kind of thing to to be like, here's a clue, here's this suspect, et cetera? Did you have to sort of uh, make any other documents or spreadsheets or anything like that? I did. Um, I always wish I was the kind of writer who had, you know, the, the poster board with the, the drawings and diagrams and lines from this to that. And um, but I, I, I can't read my own writing. <laughs> for one thing, and I can't draw, <laughs> but I definitely had, I had three or four different, um, just Microsoft Word docs that I had going all the time. One was character development, and I do little character development exercises. One was a, like a chapter breakdown, chapter by chapter with notes in there. Right. Or, and I would, I made it, you know, at the beginning, but I was constantly adding to it. Um, and then I'd go back and, and make sure, okay, in chapter 11, I have to make sure that I add this to tie in with whatever's gonna, so that was kind of an, it was an evolving process. That makes sense, um, yeah, yeah. Because it's I, a lot to keep track of. It yeah. is, yeah, yeah. It I, always, I always do a chapter by chapter thing about what day it is, and I do this with editing too because it's really easy to wind up with like, okay, it's Thursday and then tomorrow it's still Thursday, uh, you know, or things like I that. I had to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, had to, I had like the day of the week. Um, and then I ended up just for clarity in my own head, I, I ended up plotting out like the, I think the story takes place over about four and a half, four and a half. weeks or so. Yeah. Um, but I ended up plotting everything out in my Google calendar on my phone so that oh, I could yeah. just easily look and be like, okay, this is the day that Savannah starts her teaching job. Right. This is the day, yeah. you know, it helps so much just to keep yeah. it clear in yeah. my head. It just keeps it kind of rooted. It's, it makes it easier to write and keeps it more rooted for the, the reader. They never stop. Yeah. They never stop. Wait a minute. How long have <laughs> you been tweeting for? You know? yeah. <laughs> We've been in the same day for five chapters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did those character exercises help you develop these backstories? Because again, all these characters have their own dimensions and they are unique. So I'm kind of curious if those as lent themselves to this and that application. It definitely did. Um, I did a lot of I guess like in the last few years, I've I've tried to get better at character development, but I came up with like um, a few questions that I would ask myself about each character that I had to answer. And it just made them more like three dimensional to me. For me. And so I know like little things that happened in the past of each character that never make it into the story, but it helped shape the character for me. So right. you know where they're coming from, what their experience is, what they might do now. Um, and that's all plotted out in, in Word docs too. <laughs> yeah. We can keep going back to it. So then I'm sure you'll use some of those notes. Yeah, those notes too. yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm really excited in the next book to tell a little more of, of Sydney's and Skylar's stories. So mm -hmm. that's going to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. I want their story. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> we have Victoria Gilbert, AKA Vicki Weevil asking, she says, Tracy, I know you've worked a long time for this. Can you tell others how it's worth it to persevere? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Celeste. How it's Can, how it's worth it to uh, to persevere. How you kept going. <laughs> um, that's very true. I'm so in the questions. Um, I I mean to be a hundred percent honest. I started writing. I've been writing forever since I was a kid, but I started writing the idea of creating a book and getting it published 16 years ago when my second kid was born. Um, so now I've got like four and a half complete yeah. and yeah. a lot more up here. <laughs> um, but a year and a half, almost two years ago when Fran, I've been really lucky to have Fran, Fran she, she saw something, I guess, in my writing or in me that she really believed she, she'd be able to help me do something with. Um, and she signed up for the long haul. I mean, I'm, I'm, but a year and a half or two years ago when she came to me, I guess it was like last spring when she said, let's let's send a pitch to Hallmark. I really was at the point where I had kind of started to decide I can't quit writing. I know that I can't quit writing. It's therapy for me. I have to write. But uh, maybe I need to just step back and just write for me because Publishing is hard. I mean, the process, the query process, submissions can be brutal. You can only <laughs> you can only yes. subject yourself to that um, continually for so long. So, yes. so I think that maybe that's the point. Like looking at the big picture now, maybe that's the point I had to be at when she came to me with that idea, where I could look at it as yes. okay, I have nothing to lose. Let me see what happens. So in a way, the stakes were really high, but they also there were no stakes because I felt like I was almost at the end of the road. Anyway. It's worth it. I'm I'm glad that she didn't let me quit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, well, we are too. Thank you. Yeah, but um, I had no idea, but we sure are. Um, we are so happy to have this book. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lady Gizmo has a, uh, another question. Tracy, how did you meet Anne and end up working with her? She sounds so nice and helpful to you. I mean, Fran is amazing. I'm just going to give her the shout out as well. But she was going to have to do with Fran. Um, I queried um, Fran. Um, I, like a lot of writers, I queried a lot of agents. Um, and Fran, I think, rejected me. <laughs> But she gave me some feedback, and somehow I ended up. Um, I'm trying to remember. It was it was a few years ago, but I ended up reaching back out to her when I had a short story published in a magazine. Just kind of like, hey, I know you liked what I sent you before, even though you didn't. You know, you weren't at a point where you could represent me. Just so you know, this is what I did, and she ended up um, ended up um, helping me publish the Fall of Our Secrets, which was a. Um, we got that published through a small, like online, um, an e-publisher. She made that happen. She made that happen. She worried. She, worried. Um, she worried. so that was huge for me. It it didn't. It was a very small publisher, so it didn't really go anywhere. But that was still a nice. That was great. That was great. That was great. Um, and then, even though I was writing and I I finished a couple more manuscripts in the, in between then and now, I just. I just think so much of publishing is like right place, right time, right editor, right publishing house looking for this specific thing. And I, I never, <laughs> I just couldn't hit that sweet spot. Okay. Sweet spot. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm kind of curious. My final question to you is going to be, you know, what do you hope your readers walk away with from this book? I mean, this is to both of you. What do you want people to, when they think of out of the picture? <laughs> I hope they fall in love with the characters, um, and I hope they come back for, for the next book and the next book in the series because they want to see Savannah solve mysteries, but they also want to find out what happens in her life and what happens with Sydney and Skylar and his parents and Hector yes. Gallagher. <laughs> so I just want them to love the characters as much as I do. Yep. 
I agree. I hope they fall in love with the characters, and it's a fun mystery. Uh, no, I, I hope no, to really enjoy trying to really watch it in their head and seeing if they're right at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Seeing if they pick up the breadcrumbs that Tracy put down, uh, and, um, and um, yeah, yeah. whether when, they, they for it, whether they guess how it plays out or not. I hope they enjoy the ride. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong. I, I, I'm, you know, no spoilers, but I fell for one of the red herrings. I fell for him. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. That's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. I, I was wrong with my assumption for the mystery. I might as well admit it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vicky's saying good night, but she's saying she wants to congratulate you guys again. I mean, it is such a big deal, and it's so impressive. I mean, does anyone else have any other questions? Is there something else you guys wanted to touch on? Because everyone should be reading this book. Oh, oh, I know what I want to say. Um, so it's in paperback like this, but it's also on ebook. It's you can get it. Great. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Angela. This was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so honored that I get to talk with y'all. Like this is such a privilege. I'm so I'm so happy that we got to chat tonight. I mean, I was I mean I got to read this phenomenal book, and you guys are the sweetest humans. And this has been a great conversation. Yeah. This was a great experience for me to talk to both of you. Honestly, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, I mean, unless anyone else has any questions, I think we might call it a night. <laughs> All right. Well, Tracy, thank you again for writing us some wonderful books. The first book already came out. I'm already waiting for book two. Like that is how invested I am in this relationship. <laughs> I work on it. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's gonna get invested in this book. Everyone needs to. I promise you, it is worth it. And y'all, I love cozies, and I'm saying that truly from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> like read this book. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much for watching everybody. Have a nice night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Night. There's always a little